taking office to become the 13th president of the United States was Millard Fillmore, Taylor's vice president and fellow Whig. Fillmore's three-year term was mostly of note for the passage of the Compromise of 1850. The Compromise of 1850 was a packet of five bills that attempted to resolve issues arising from the newly acquired territories as a result of the Mexican-American War. President Zachary Taylor had lived to see the inception of these bills, and it fell to Fillmore to see them through. Anti-slavery lawmakers like Taylor wanted California to be admitted as a free state, while pro-slavery legislators naturally favored slavery and slave trade in the new territories. While the Compromise admitted California as a free state and abolished the slave trade, but not slavery, in the District of Columbia, Fillmore signed the Compromise due to the improvements to the Fugitive Slave Act, which granted federal officers to slaveholders who were seeking escapees. The passage of these acts seemed to continue Taylor's goals and served to bitterly divide the Whig Party. Before leaving office, Fillmore created the Utah Territory in 1850, granting Brigham Young the office of governor. He also opened trade with Japan, giving merchant shippers a stop on the long route to China and Southeast Asia. While his successor, Franklin Pierce, was the first to see this operation through, Fillmore ordered the trade expedition, effectively ending American isolation from Japan. When Fillmore was not chosen by the Whigs to run for re-election, the Democrats knew that they had their in. In the election of 1852, the Democrats' candidate, a New Hampshire lawyer and brigadier general during the Mexican-American War, Franklin Pierce, was named the 14th president of the United States. At his inauguration, Pierce stated, My administration will not be deterred by any timid forebodings of evil from expansion. Indeed, it is not to be disguised that our attitude as a nation and our position in the globe render the acquisition of certain possessions not within our jurisdiction eminently important for our protection. Described as a doe-face, or a northern citizen with southern sympathies in the argument over slavery, Pierce is sometimes noted as one of the worst presidents in United States history. He seemed ill-equipped to manage a changing nation and seemed to fail to recognize the damage that the rift of slavery was causing. His cabinet was filled with men whose opinions and policy practices differed wildly. And while many saw his appointments as in error, Pierce's cabinet is the only one to remain the same throughout his term in office. The only major legislation signed by Pierce was the Kansas-Nebraska Act, defining those territories and granting those territories the right to decide by popular vote whether or not to allow slavery. The act effectively repealed the Missouri Compromise, which had stated that no new states admitted above the 36th North Parallel would be slave states. The act saw the country divide even further over the slavery issue and led to bloodshed like the actions in what came to be known as Bleeding Kansas, where John Brown and his sons murdered pro-slavery activists in 1856. The country was pointed more than ever toward civil war, and Franklin Pierce, too, lost his candidacy for a second term. James Buchanan took office as the United States' 15th president on March 4, 1857. Like his predecessor, Buchanan was called a doe-face, or a northerner with sympathies toward the slave-owning South. 
he had served as a senator from Pennsylvania, as well as in the House of Representatives. Buchanan served as Secretary of State under James K. Polk and Minister to the United Kingdom under Franklin Pierce. A lawyer with a huge political background and the motto, I acknowledge no master but the law. Buchanan, too, seemed ill-equipped to effectively lead a quickly dividing nation. In his inaugural speech, Buchanan promised not to run for a second term, but the point was moot by the end of his time in office. The split caused in the Democrats caused a Republican plurality in Congress in the election of 1858 and blocked most of the Buchanan-backed legislation. He was almost impeached when his administration came under investigation for buying votes from Republican representatives. Any effort Buchanan made to unite the bitter factions of the North and South only served to alienate both sides. And under Buchanan's administration, more and more Southern states seceded from the Union, drawing the battle lines for the Civil War. This failure to bring diplomacy has landed James Buchanan, too, on the list of worst United States presidents. The election of 1860 would see another divisive figure take office. While it could be argued that Abraham Lincoln was the linchpin of the Civil War, it could also be argued that the man knew how to lead and knew the steps to take to unite our soon-to-be warring nation. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.